Next question is from Jazz Fitness. I'd love to hear you discuss the recent debate on range of motion. Oh, oh this wow. is the, the is this a, okay? We're we're extending this from because obviously we did a whole episode. Yeah, I was going to say we did a whole episode. What more do you want to hear? Yeah. yeah, there was a whole episode. I mean, really, the debate was is a fuller range of motion beneficial when compared to a partial range of motion when it comes to building muscle. And the argument goes with the partial range of motion argument is you're able to keep more tension on the target muscle. Once you go outside of a certain range of motion, tension is taken off the muscle. Our argument is you should be able to maintain tension on your target muscle intrinsically throughout the full range of motion. And training a full range of motion is going to give you a broader strength range because your strength is relatively specific. And studies show that muscles that work through larger ranges of motion they build more anyways. And what you don't train, you lose. So if you train a partial range of motion, you start to lose a strength and mobility. So the prerequisites are, can you control that range of motion? Do you have good stability and good connection? If you do, within those parameters, train the fullest range of motion possible. Don't go outside of that. If you have no control, stability, or strength outside of that range of motion, your goal should be to increase that range so you can train in greater and greater range well, of Well, and in addition to that, even if the other guy that we were having this debate with was completely right, because uh, there's there's some truth to what he was saying. No doubt that if all your goal was to develop the quads and you know once you get out of that range of motion in a really deep squat, the less of the quads are being activated and tension is going elsewhere to other muscles that are going to support that. Even if if uh, we were to to you know agree and go that direction, would you want to do that and to sacrifice though the the uh, mobility work that it takes for your hips and ankles to get all the way down? Would you at at any age of your life? want to just write that off. If I told you that by doing that, by shortening your range of motion up for years, uh, very much so, yeah. so will probably it's lead- limit your function. That's right. Lead to hip and back and knee pain because you, you decided to shorten your range of motion up in pursuit of building more muscle in your quads. So even if his case was completely right and we were completely wrong- you know, would you want to do that? That was the problem that I had with that statement in that debate was, okay, maybe a very small percentage of, you know, high, high level bodybuilders uh, want to train specifically in that range of motion for a while to get a little bit more development in their quads and they don't want any more hamstring or glute or calf work at all. They just want more quads because it's lagging. There's some value to that statement, but pretty much everybody else, I think the statement is more harmful than it is helpful. Yeah, but also along those lines, as a bodybuilder, there's one thing that you do better than any other strength athlete, and that is connect mind muscle to target muscles. That's what bodybuilders do phenomenally. So if you're telling me that you lose tension in your quads, right. when you go down below a certain point, like figure out, you can figure it out. Like connect to the, trust me, the quads aren't turning off. Yeah. Unless you're relaxing at the bottom or you have well, poor mobility. The other problem is like it's like there's just too much isolation focus. Yeah. And, and you, know, it, you know, in general, we try so hard to, to you know, promote the, the value of compound lifts and like what that does is it's such a louder systemic signal uh, throughout your body that everything has to respond. This is a whole new environment we have to account for. Uh, and so to eliminate that as part of the training process is, is pretty ridiculous because it is going to affect all the muscles involved with that movement uh, tremendously and you can isolate it and you can sculpt and you can yeah. do all that stuff. But to, to remove that from the conversation is pretty stupid. You know, it's funny. We did a whole, literally a whole targeted episode on this. If you want to know more, you know, I'm sure it'll be linked here and you can go check it out. But the comments underneath that particular episode, every single person who heard us talk, they, I saw so many experiences of people saying my knees used to hurt. My back used to hurt. Then I worked on mobility. I'm doing deeper squats. All the pain is gone. My shoulders used to hurt. Then I worked on mobility. Now I'm doing full range of motion shoulder presses right. and my shoulder pain is gone. Like the whole, that old mentality of, oh, it hurts your knees if you go too low. Oh, it hurts your shoulders if you go too deep. That's actually not entirely correct. The truth mm -hmm. is your mobility is making you hurt. You fix that. Then the full range of motion stuff will reduce pain not add pain. Right. So even regardless if your argument is purely on aesthetics and like muscle development, like you like play that out. What does that end up with? Like where, what is your body going to function like? like? And then what, what do you lose? Pain do you have? And what then, do you lose? And then you lose yeah, your aesthetics. So risk versus reward. Well, you end up like me. That's, I mean, that's why I think I was so passionate about this argument was because I agreed with that guy. 
you know, 22 year old me agree was would quickly agree with that guy because all I cared about was the way I looked and I was young and I didn't like squatting because I wasn't good at it. And so I just said, oh, cool. Good excuse for me not to ever pursue getting better at squatting because I can actually develop my quads, which was the main thing I cared about at that time. Oh, cool. I'll just stop doing that completely. What I didn't know was going to happen to me was because I did that, I had terrible hip and ankle mobility. And so chronic low back pain and hip pain came in my late 30s or my mid 30s. And I was like, well, I can't figure out what's going on with me. Oh, that's why. Because I decided that I would just shorten my range of motion up on my squatting because I didn't need to develop. I wanted to develop my quads. That was my main focus. But now I'm, I'm stuck with this low back pain and hip pain. And it took me a year and a half, two years of reversing that by all the mobility work. And the beauty of it is after all that work to get to that place, now all I have to do to keep that from happening is squatting deep. That's it. That's all I have to do. And now I, I'm my hips and my back are fine.